Hello and welcome to today's Daily Chelsea. Now the first thing we need to talk about is something that's very close to Rory's heart here, the new stadium. Rory, you're off there tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, uh, we're going to go over it. It's going to be, uh, I'm really excited to see new plans. I mean, a lot of the stuff that's been released already looks fantastic. I'm mm. really, really excited. I think that the red brick front is just very exciting. Any, anything with that sort of red brick exterior always looks classy yeah. and, and uh, that's exactly what it should look you know it's in keeping with the area of the Fulham Road yeah. and I'm delighted that we are remaining at Stamford Bridge so that, is, no, that, is the, that. that is the important thing the fact that we, we, we won you know the CPO the Chelsea pitch uh, owners won the battle and we fought and we managed to stay at Stamford Bridge so going over there tonight is now going to be really exciting just see what they have to offer I'm going to I'm going to try and make our feelings heard I think mm-hmm. I know that a lot of it's going to be corporate I know that that's going to happen that is just sort of modern football but yeah. We have to learn from the Emirates. We have to learn from what are, you know the mistakes of other grounds. There's no difference between Southampton, Middlesbrough, all these all these like identical stadiums. Are so boring. Yeah. Our ground has to be original and and it has to be has to kind of have the heart of Chelsea in in the, in its essence. So I really hope that that can happen. And I'm really going to campaign for one tier, one like around the rest of the state. I know it's going to be all corporate and like they're going to really do They are going to have the priority, yeah. but give us, give the fans one big cop, one big stand. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, what I'm hoping for. I like, I like the sound of that. From the diagrams that I've seen online, the front of it almost it's got kind of a cathedral feel or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's bit, a you know, it's a football. bit, yeah. Um, which is very fitting, considering. Yeah, I think I think it's great. I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited by it. I'm not, I'm not that excited about playing at Wembley for three years if that is what happens as a result. Mm. But beggars can't be choosers. I was desperate to stay at Stanford Bridge. That was the only thing that, that was, I was really holding on to. So this is a small price to pay. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. I think that the uh, the exterior lo- the exterior looks really good, and I'm excited to see the plans. We'll be making a video, so make sure you check it out. Check it out tomorrow. Um, right, we've got to talk about the transfer window. Um, Have we? Well, uh, so, yeah, Charlie and I had a little debrief last night. Uh, he sort of set my fears um, a little bit at ease. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I initially thought after the skilling had, you know, given me the, his yeah. in-depth lowdown in it all. Um, Rory, in a nutshell, your thoughts on our business? Um, not ideal. I saw your video with Charlie yesterday. I thought it was brilliant. I thought Charlie hit the nail on the head where he said Chelsea had been going for these players just because they didn't come off didn't mean yeah. that we weren't going for them. Yeah. And I think that it's important to remember that people are giving Chelsea grief, giving the board grief, and sometimes you I'm don't not, win the battle. You don't win. Do you? Yeah, you yeah, try f- and exactly. you lose. Exactly. And I think that from from you know, I learned that yesterday watching Backpage Blues. I was pleased to hear that we were genuinely in the market for the players of the likes of you know Paul Pogba and that players of that ilk. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that we were going for them it cheered me up a bit. But and the fact that, well, I like that Charlie said that, you know, this isn't the end of Stones, this isn't the end of Pogba, it just means we're going to have to wait until January and then we can go, and and go again. again. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think the, only, the only way to look at it is it, it obviously hasn't been the dream window. But as somebody pointed out on, on Twitter today, uh, somebody who I follow, yeah. kind of gave, gave a list of, of players, you know, from, from the likes of Christensen to Callas uh, to, the, to the boys that we've signed have gone back to Reading, all, all those players... It actually, I was thinking, what is the point of all these loans? I just didn't get it. Yeah. And and the fellow, I think Silvino, whose name is on Twitter, he pointed out, look, this is a good situation because if any of these players develop into a world class player, they're ours. They're assets. They're assets. Yeah. So so it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing that um, that they're not at Chelsea. They're going to develop, and if they become brilliant. They're still our player. Yeah. So I think it's quite a nice spin to put on it. It's certainly not the one that I had the mind uh, <laughs> yeah. or intelligence to put in. Well, the, the papers are going back. There's 30, 30 31, 32 players 32 is there now players, uh, across the world. It yeah. Well, it's it's basically it's practically three full 11s, isn't it? It's three full teams yeah. that we have out and about at the moment. Predominantly a V-test, but all over the place. Yeah. Right. Um, let's talk about Costa. He's been in the paper. Um, he wants to score goals. He's not scored enough uh so far this season, only one for the Blues. Uh, and he's saying he wants to score some goals for Spain. As we know, it's the international break coming up. Um, you know, how can we get Costa firing all cylinders again, mate? Is it the service? Is I, it What is it? Is the, it in his head? Or is it? Or is, are we just being a bit eager? I think it's, I think it's important. I, I, I think your last point is the most valid one there, Jack. I mm-hmm. think that it's important that we don't just buy into the, to the tabloid narrative that... Diego yeah. Costa isn't playing well. Diego Costa is a, is a wonderful player. And although towards the tail end of last season he didn't play brilliantly, he his goals were... Pr- the, the, if you're going to pick one oh, reason why he won, he won the league. league. Yeah, if he you're going to pick one league. reason, yeah. you, you'd, have to do a, you'd have to flip the coin to decide between John Terry's form and Diego Costa's goals. Definitely. Eden has his brilliance, perhaps. 
But one of those three things. Yeah. They were the three key components as to why we won the league. So let's not conform to this narrative in the tabloids that suggests that Costa's off his rocker and he's yeah. is it homesick. Hysteria, and hysteria? Is it a load of twaddle? I believe so. I think that Diego Costa is a fantastic player and isn't playing half as badly as people say. Yeah. Uh, I think that his performance at West Bromwich Albion was fantastic, typified yeah. by that goal yeah. where he ran the length of the pitch at about 30 kilometres an hour to slide it in, yeah. uh, having run from his own box. And I'm convinced that he will find, he will rediscover his form and rediscover his touch, his eye for goal very yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that brings us into um, this weekend. We've got the international break. Yeah. Um, I it's believe, you're, I believe you're going to one of the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, I always follow England as often as possible. So, uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, but great time for us. I mean, things yeah. aren't going exactly well in the league. A little bit of time for Jose to get, you know, get some plans and, you know, maybe do a bit of tinkering, you know, just have a little bit of time over a weekend, over a glass of wine, to go, <laughs> right, what's going on and yeah. how can we Absolutely. fix it? I think there's two ways to look at an international break, actually. My, my initial reaction was, we're playing so badly, thank God that this international break has come along when it has, because we really do need time to regroup and refocus. Yeah. The other way to look at it is, we're coming off the back of such a bad home defeat that we now have to wait two weeks to put it right. I don't necessarily think that's... Catch. Yeah, I think I what think, think that, I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know the point you're making, but you know, I I think after a defeat like that at Stamford Bridge, you know, it's not a bad thing for the players to be sitting at home to be simmering about that. Mm. You know, it's for it to be keeping them up at night, worrying about I should have made that tackle, I should have mm. you know put that cross in, I should have got tackle. that shot on. Yeah, yeah. should have <laughs> got that shot on target. You know, yeah, please God. Um, so I think that's all right. A little bit of a break. Let them, you know. Think about it. It's like when you have a little kid, isn't it? You sit him on the step and say, right, I want you to... I'm very disappointed in you. I still yeah. love you, but I'm very disappointed. I want you to think about what you've done. Yeah. And don't do it again. And you put it right. You put it right at Goodison Park. Yeah, exactly. So, Everton, watch out. Yeah. Um, I, I think... I th I'm really looking forward to it. But I actually can't decide. What do you think, guys? Do you think it's better to have had this international break coming off the back of such a bad result? Or do you, would you have preferred there to be a game even soon, midweek, to try and put it right immediately? I'm inclined to think that it's better to have the break. You? Yeah, I'm with you, mate. Yeah, good. So yeah, so fingers crossed, England win. And uh, yeah, in fact, uh, let us know if you're not if you're not an England fan or if you're not from England. Let us know who are you playing this week and who do you uh, who do you hope maybe we'll see you at the Euros next summer. Yeah, That's nice. All right. Cheers for watching, guys. Come on, you blues. Plays as our left-sided centre half. So with Gillian Bodie coming in as a left footer, does that mean Terry will move across, or does it mean that Gillian Bodie will be a right footer?